All right, everybody, we are doing our first set of notes in unit two. So go ahead and get your spiral notebook out. We set up unit two last time. So our table of contents should already be in there for unit two. So I'm just gonna grab this tab and flip right to unit two. And so unit two, the table of contents is on page 15. We leave page 16 blank because that's where we write test dates and stuff. So our first set of notes in unit two will be on page 17. And they are going to be called solving equations. So go ahead and write this down. And then once you get this written down, you will need to tape this sheet of paper. You'll have to fold it in half first, but you will tape it down to page 17. So I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. So your note set should be taped in now. So we're gonna go ahead and start going over this. Now, before I talk about how you actually solve equations, we need to know what a solution is and what the whole idea is behind solving equations. So that's what this little box is for in this example. So we're gonna kind of talk about why we solve equations, what we're actually finding when we do solve them. So up here in this box, this is a solution A solution to an equation is a specific value. So this is just a number. It's a specific value that makes the statement of equality true. So we're looking for a specific number that makes the statement true. And then I put note, there can be more than one solution to an equation. We're gonna to get to that in a later note set. So let's take a look at this example. In the equation, x plus two equals five, and then we start talking about the value. So look at this equation right here, x plus two equals five. Try not to solve it in your head. Think about what number plus two will equal five. So everybody should know that the value is three. So x equals three makes the statement of equality true because if this x is actually a three, then it's three plus two on the left-hand side. So therefore, x equals three is the solution. And we can always check our answer just to make sure that it's right. And we are going to for this example. So anytime you are checking to see if your solution actually works, all you're doing is you're gonna substitute the value in that you're claiming x is into the x into your original equation. So I'm gonna substitute in. And remember, when we substitute, you need to always have parentheses around it. So we're substituting in the value of three into where that x is, and now I'm just gonna write the rest of the equation. We need to make sure that this is actually a true statement. If it is, then our solution is correct. So we just need to simplify the left-hand side. So three plus two, that's equal to five, and I'm gonna bring the rest down. And now we need to talk about this. 5 equals 5. It is either going to be a true statement or a not true statement. This is a true statement, so that means x equals 3 is our solution. So the whole goal of solving equations is we are trying to find out what value or number x has to be to make the statement true. And when it says statement, it's talking about the equation. Okay? So now let's move into solving equations. I'm going to slide this down some. So I have a little note right here. In order to solve equations, we have to use something called inverse operations. You were supposed to learn about these in middle school. Inverse just means opposite. So think about whatever operation you have to do that is opposite. So the inverse operations undo each other. So I have some one-step equations right here. One-step equations just means it takes one step to solve them. Pretty straightforward. And I have the four operations that we typically use. So we're just gonna work through these and we're gonna address all the inverse operations that we would use. So looking at problem number one, okay? The statement or our equation is x plus nine equals 12. Now, when you're solving these, your whole goal is to get the variable, whether it's x or not, whatever it is, get the variable by itself isolated on one side. 
So in order to do that, my, I would have to get rid of this plus nine. So the inverse of plus nine, the inverse of addition would be subtraction. So I'm just gonna subtract off that same exact value. But what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side because it's what keeps the equation balanced. So when we do this, these are going to cancel out and go to zero. And we're going to be left with, I'm gonna bring the X down because I didn't do anything with it. The equal sign always comes down. And then 12 minus nine is three. And here's my solution. Okay, so inverse of addition is subtraction. So now let's go look at number two. Number two, our equation is x minus five equals seven. So again, we're trying to isolate the variable x right here. So my job would be to undo this minus five. So I have to think about what the inverse is. So the inverse of subtraction or the opposite of subtraction would be addition. So I'm just gonna add five to both sides. Well, these fives are gonna cancel out. And I'm gonna have X, bring down my equal sign, seven plus five is 12. And this is my solution. So one and two are addition and subtraction. They are inverses of each other. Okay, now let's go look at three and four. So number three, the first thing that we have to talk about before we address number three, we need to talk, in, talk about what's happening between this negative three and this variable m. When a number or a coefficient is sitting right beside a variable, that's always a representation of multiplication. So this is multiplication happening between these two numbers, okay? So in order to get rid of that negative three, we have to think what's the opposite or inverse of multiplication, and that's division. So we're gonna divide by negative three. And remember, you have to do it to both sides. And I see a lot of students just divide by three. You have to make sure that you get that negative. If you don't, you aren't solving the equation the correct way. Okay, well, negative three divided by negative three is one. So we're gonna be left with one M. You can write the one right there, but you're never gonna see it written. So understand that this is one M. And then 15 divided by negative three is negative five. Okay, and then four. Four, a lot of students freak out about because they see this fraction and they wanna stop. But I want you to know that a fraction is just a representation of division. So when I see this equation, this is how I would read it. X divided by three is equal to negative two. So a fraction, don't freak out about it, just understand that it's division. So knowing that this is division that's happening between these two numbers, we need to think about the opposite or inverse of division, which is multiplication. So what I'm gonna do, how you get rid of this fraction is we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator. This number on the bottom we need to multiply by. Okay, well then these threes are gonna cancel, they go to one. So this is three divided by three, which is one. So we're gonna have one X is equal to, and then we just multiply on this side. So negative two times three, and that's gonna give me negative six. Okay, so these are the four common inverse operations that you start using, I believe in the sixth grade, and we use them all the way out for the rest of your math career. So we definitely need to know these. This is just a quick introduction to solving equations. Okay, now that we've talked about one-step equations, let's flip to the inside of this foldable, and we're gonna talk about two-step equations. So, because we need to write on the left, I'm going to get it on page 16, so that way I can actually write on it and not have to deal with the spiral. So you can just pull your paper over to the left and you should be able to write on it. So let me zoom in for us. Okay, so now we're going to talk, going to talk about two-step equations. So they are very similar to one-step equations with the idea of you use inverse operations to solve them. They just take two steps to solve instead of one. So I wrote the steps that you would need to use in order to solve them. They're right here at the top. So the first one says, get rid of the constant. Remember the constant is just the number standing by itself. 
through addition or subtraction. These are normally the routes that you would have to take to get rid of that constant. So after you do that, you're gonna get rid of the coefficient, which is the number standing in front of the variable through multiplication or division. Again, you have to make the decision based on what the equation looks like. So we're just gonna start. I'm gonna do a couple with you and then I'll let you try it. I do want you to notice though, on these particular problems, I have this check space right here. This is to check to make sure that our solution actually works. So whenever we solve this and we get M is equal to some number, we need to check to make sure that that number actually works. And I'll show you what I'm talking about on two of them and then you'll do two on your own. Okay, so take a look at number five. That's where we're gonna start. Our equation is 3M plus four equals negative 11. So my job, remember, is to get this variable by itself. My goal is to isolate that variable. So the first thing that you need to do or get rid of is this constant. We can't do anything with this 3m until this number is gone. So this plus four, I need to get rid of. Now I have to make the decision, am I going to add or subtract? And that's based on what this number actually is. So since this is a plus four or positive four, I'm going to subtract four on both sides because that's the inverse. So remember, subtraction and addition, they're inverses of each other. So these fours are gonna cancel. I'm gonna draw my little bar. I did not mess with that 3M, so I'm gonna bring it down, bring my equal sign down. Okay, and now we have to deal with negative 11 minus four is gonna be negative 15. So now, remember our goal is to get that variable by itself. Since this is a coefficient, I have to get rid of the coefficient through multiplication and division. So you have to make that decision. This is multiplication right here, so I'm gonna to have to use division. So I'm going to divide both sides by three. Remember, you have to do it to both sides. This is gonna be one M and negative 15 divided by three is negative five. So this is our solution. Now, you're not asked to check a lot of times, but for the purpose of these notes, I want you to see what it's like to check them. So, this is what we are claiming the variable is equal to. So we're claiming that it's equal to negative five. So all I have to do is take this negative five and substitute it in for that M right there. And remember, whenever you substitute in, we need to put parentheses around it. So I'm gonna substitute in a negative five plus four equals negative 11. And the goal of checking is to make sure that it's actually a true statement. That's the goal. So three times negative five is negative 15. I had to do this first because in order of operations, multiplication comes first. So then I'm gonna bring down everything else. Then negative 15 plus four is negative 11. And this right here is a true statement. So this is our solution. Okay, now I want to jump down to number eight. So go down there to number eight and then I'm gonna let you try six and seven on your own. So number eight, the reason why I would like to do number eight with you is because this is written slightly backwards from what we normally see. Normally we have the variable in the front and then constant in the back, but it still works exactly the same. So your job is to get rid of the constant first. So when we look at these two numbers, the five is actually the constant. Even though it's in the front, it's still considered a constant because it's a number by itself. So now we need to talk about how we get rid of that five. Since it's a positive five, we are going to subtract because this is the same as plus five, okay? So these fives are going to cancel and I'm left with negative three X is equal to, and then 11 minus five is six. And now I have to get rid of that negative three out there in the front. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative three. Remember, you have to divide by everything. So the negative is included. So these are gonna go to one. So that's gonna be one X is equal to negative two. And this is our solution. Remember, I would like you to check these problems. So in order to check it, all you do is take your value that you're claiming it's equal to and substitute it back in. So I'm gonna write five minus three in parentheses, because remember when we substitute, we always want parentheses. I'm gonna sub in a negative two in for that X right there and then equals 11. 
So now we just need to simplify this left side of the equal sign. And remember, you have to keep in mind of the order of operations. We cannot do five minus three first because this negative three is being multiplied against this negative two. And multiplication comes before subtraction in the order of operation. So we're gonna take care of this part first. So this five, I'm gonna bring straight down. And so negative three times negative two is positive six. And then five plus six is 11. And we have 11 equals 11, which is a true statement. So our solution that we said is true. This is correct. So I want you to take a minute or two and do six and seven on your own. And I also want you to do the check boxes. So solve these equations just like five and eight and then check them. And after you're done with that, go ahead and push play on the video again and I'll have the correct answers for you. Okay, so here is six and seven as promised. You should have paused the video so that you could do these on your own, but here are the correct answers. So make sure that you got negative three on six and positive three on seven, and make sure that you check them to make sure that they are true statements. So once we plug them in, remember that we should have a true statement down here. If it's not true, then that means we've done something wrong on this particular problem. Okay, so now that we've talked about two-step equations, the right-hand side of the paper is multi-step equations, which all that means is that it takes multiple steps to solve that equation. That could be two or more. In most cases, since they're called multi-step equations, it's more than two, so it's three or more. So I have listed out the steps that you would take in order to solve these. There's four of them, and we're just gonna kinda talk through them. I'm gonna actually look as we talk through them, I'm gonna look at this one down here, the one on the left, because sometimes you can skip some steps, and so this is a good example to talk about it with. So the first step is to distribute if needed. We've talked about a lot in my class when you distribute, how you distribute, what number you distribute. So it says look for a number directly in front of the parentheses or negative minus sign directly in front of the parentheses. That tells you what to distribute, and you only distribute if there are parentheses. So in this problem down here, there are no parentheses, which means we do not distribute. So you would skip step one, okay? Step two, it says to combine like terms on each side of the equation. So I've made a little note. This is how I do it. I do the left side first and then the right. And then I put note, there may not be any like terms and that's okay. Sometimes there's not. If there's not, that means you just get to skip step two. So let's take a look at this one. Focus on the left side. Check to see if there are like terms. This is seven X and negative 13, those are not like terms, so we can't combine them. And then just take a look at the right side, 4x and plus eight, also not like, not like terms, so we get to skip step two altogether. Step three is where it normally kicks in. You always will probably have to do step three in some form. So it says move variables to one side of the equation and constants to the other. And I put a little note here on how I like to do it because in my opinion, it's the easiest. You can do it either way, but this is how I always do it. So I move the smallest number of variables to the bigger number of variables through addition or subtraction. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like over here on the left one, and then step four is to just solve. So we're gonna go ahead and solve this one on the left. I'm gonna leave that note on number three so I can explain what that means. So remember, on this left one right here, we got to skip step one and step two because there were no parentheses and there were no like terms on each side. So now we're on to step three. Notice that when you look at this, we have seven X over here on the left and four X over here on the right. We can't have them on both sides of the equal sign. We need to move them to be on one side. And when I say them, I'm talking about the variables. We need all variables to be on the same side. So here's how I do it. And this is how I've always done it. I am going to take the smaller number of variables. So when we look at seven X and four X, four is the smaller one, take that one and move it to the other side. So do whatever you have to do, add or subtract to move it. So this one, since this is a positive 4x, I'm just going to subtract 4x to get rid of it. Remember, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So I'm gonna write minus 4x. So these 4x's are gonna cancel, and we gotta see what we're left with. I do wanna make a note. 
I wrote it under the 7x because these are like terms and your whole goal is to combine like terms. So go ahead and combine those. 4x and 13 are not like terms, so you can't do it from that one. So then 7x minus 4x is 3x. And then I'm just gonna bring down everything else that I didn't mess with. So that's the minus 13 equals eight, okay? So now I've moved all the variables to one side. Now I need to move the constants to the other. So here, this is the constant. So now this is just your normal two-step equation. We just practice these. So this is minus 13. So how we undo it or get rid of it is to do the inverse. So the inverse of subtraction is addition. So I'm gonna add 13 to both sides. Those 13s are gone. And I'm left with 3x is equal to 21. And now I just need to get rid of that three. So I'm just gonna divide by three on both sides. And x is equal to seven. And there's our solution. We're not asked to check these, so once you get your solution, you can stop there. So this one was a three-step equation. This is what they typically look like. Sometimes you'll have a little bit more that involve a few more steps. And the right one is an example of that one. But this is how you do it. So let's take a look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side, we have a few more steps because the first thing you should notice is it has what? Parentheses. And so since it has parentheses, we're actually gonna have to do step one up here, which is distribute. So distribute is the first step that we would need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the arrows to distribute. Remember, when you distribute, all it is is multiplication, okay? So the first arrow I drew was seven times M. So that's seven M and then seven times negative five is negative 35. And then I'm just gonna drop everything else down because there was nothing for me to do to all that stuff. So I'm just gonna bring all of that down, just like this. So now, step one is done. I distributed, the parentheses are gone. So now step two up here said do combine like terms on each side of the equation. So you just have to look, make sure, so focus on the left-hand side. If you see any like terms, just combine them, clean it up a little bit, it makes it easier on you. So we actually do have a set of like terms on the left. We have 7m plus 4m, which is 11m. And then I'm going to bring down that minus 35. Bring down my equal sign. And then I just need to check if there's like terms. There's not on that side, so I'm just going to bring down 6m plus 20. And now it looks very similar to the one we did over here. So now the next step is to move my variables around. So remember, the way that I always do it is take the smaller one and move it to the bigger one. So. I'm gonna take the 6m and move it to be on the side with the 11. So minus 6m, minus 6m, these m's are gonna cancel. That leaves me with 5m over here. Then I'm gonna bring down my minus 35 and my positive 20. Now I need to get my constants on one side. So that has me address this minus 35. So I'm gonna add 35 to both sides. These are gonna cancel. And I have 5m is equal to 55. And then I just need to divide. So five divided by five is one, so there's a one right there. And so 55 divided by five is 11. And there's my solution. So this particular problem took one, two, took five steps to do. So this is usually in algebra one, this is as bad as they typically get when we solve linear equations like this. So this is as bad as they get. I will tell you that normally they're gonna be either two step equations like over here on the left or stuff like this one right here. So, but if you do see one that looks like this, you still know how to do it, okay? So these are our notes over solving equations. It covers one, two, and multi-step equations. So you are good to go with solving equations. And that's all I've got for you. Good job.